Welcome to Bible Mysteries. What if there are secrets in the Bible the world doesn't want you to know? You're listening to episode 181, UFO and Portal Proliferation, interview with L.A. Marzuli. Now here are your hosts, Scott and John. Hello and welcome once again to Bible Mysteries Podcast. I'm Scott Mitchell. And I'm John Potts. And this is the show that talks about things in the Bible that the world doesn't want you to know. Absolutely. And we've got one of the foremost experts on things the world doesn't want you to know, and he's doing a great job of spilling the beans here. So we'll introduce L.A. in just a moment, though he really needs no introduction. But we're going to talk about UFO proliferation and portals today in this episode. But John, let's get started, if we could, with you introducing our latest seekers. Absolutely. So this episode is brought to us uh, by the following premium subscribers who, like you said, our seekers because they are seeking the truth out there. And they are Jacob D, Amber H, Michelle S, Tiffany H, and PM Gafford, all of which came to us in September of this past year, 2023. Thank you all very much for your support. Absolutely. We thank you guys. It's because of your support that we're able to provide you this content. And without further ado, let me go ahead and, like I said, he needs no introduction, but L.A. Marzulli is an award-winning author, lecturer, and filmmaker who's penned quite a number now of books. I've actually lost track of how many, uh, including Counter Move, Days of Chaos, and the original oversized volume uh, of uh, just th- th- revealing the startling evidence of a massive cover-up of what he believes to be the remains of the Nephilim, the giants mentioned in the Bible. But L.A.'s most recent film series is called UFO's, uh, UFO Disclosure. Closure, revisiting Roswell, parts one and two, which is exoneration. Oh, hey, let me get him in here. He's already got the book show in there. <laughs> uh, let me do a solo for you, L.A. He's got exoneration and evidence from the debris field. They are fantastic. L.A. Marzulli is a frank supernaturalist who lectures on the subjects of UFOs, the Nephilim, and ancient prophetic texts. Uh, he's a uh, going to be uh, featured at the Prophecy Watchers Orlando Prophecy Summit this February 29th through March the 3rd. L.A., welcome back to Bible Mysteries. Well, it's an honor to be here, guys, and and thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. You bet. You bet. We uh, we absolutely uh, love that you could spend some time with us today. And really, you know, there's something you say in almost every one of your UFO-focused videos. And if I may quote you, you say that UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. And it's the burgeoning I want to talk about today. I, I'd like you to discuss why do you feel like there is such a proliferation of UFO activity at this time? Well, if we go to 1947 with Kenneth Arnold, um, and Arnold is flying his, his, uh, I think it's a single engine Cessna up around Mount Rainier. And he sees these, I think it's five or six craft. It's, it's a flotilla. It's, it's a group of UFOs, unlike anything he's ever seen, going way faster than they should be. And they look like this. They look like two saucers. I want to thank Sean Green for uh, making this and giving it to me. It's a great oh. prop. They look like two, two saucers, you know, inverted and placed upon each other. This is where we get the verbiage flying saucer in our lexicon. This is 1947. So there was a wave of sightings that happened in 47. Of course, a a couple of weeks later, we had the Roswell incident, and that Mm -hmm. served as the basis, um, as as we talked about just just before you had me on, but Mm -hmm. this is two films on, on the Roswell incident. And since then... It's, it's just been burgeoning. It's just, I mean, if you go and look at a, a graph, a chart, especially after the year 2000, it starts going through the roof. I mean, yeah. it's just, they're everywhere. And so something is up. Something is happening. It's not just one or two sightings. Um, if you know where to go, if you know where to look, and now it's there, but the mainstream media now is all over this stuff. I mean, yeah. if you, almost daily, there's a report a lot of the reports are old news, but it, it's it's everywhere. The mainstream media has taken this up. Um, Tucker Carlson was the one who sort of broke the story, even though the New York Times broke it. Um, I think yeah. 2004, 2005, 
three, somewhere back in there. Nobody paid any attention to it. And then Tucker in 2017, he was the one that had Commander David Fravor on his show. And Fravor said, you know, right in front of the camera, whatever this was, whatever this tic-tac-shaped object was, was something not from this world. And yeah. um, I have all these little props on my desk. But um, <laughs> that, that opened the floodgates, in my opinion. And here we are, what is it, seven years later now, which is a long time, really, when you think about it. A lot of yeah. water under the bridge. You know, the congressional <laughs> hearings. Nancy Mace looks at David Grush, who's a whistleblower. This is the halls of Congress. It's not coast to coast with George Norrie or some faraway podcast in Thailand. This is like, this is, you know, our government, your government, our government, the halls of Congress. And David Grush is a whistleblower. And Nancy Mays from South Carolina is interviewing him. And basically she, you know, asks him, well, you know, how many of these UFOs were retrieved? And he goes, well, I'm not, I've already kind of stated that. I'm not going to state it here. So he kind of brushes by the question. Then she asks the $64,000 question. Were there um, any, any bodies recovered from the crash? Grush looks up at her like this and says, yes, we retrieved biologics. You know, Mace is obviously taken aback. Yeah. And Nancy Mace's follow-up question is, were they human or non-human biologics? Once again, Grush looks right up at her. You know, if, if you're, if you're bald-facing, if you're, you know, you're, you're doing this, you're ducking the question. He looks like right up at her and, and states on the record that these recovered bodies were non-biologic, non-human biologics non-human biologics and that you know <laughs> you would think my phone would be ringing i think i had a couple of emails that's it uh the people were so asleep and there was a there was a yeah. youtube video um well it's on youtube now but it was played at a super bowl you know and the, it was called hello down there that's what it was called and these all these ufos <laughs> Are over the sky, they're buzzing stuff. They're they're hovering, you know, near near a near a, a meeting in Japan. No one's paying any attention. Some ladies on her phone reading about UFOs. All of a sudden, it's like TikTok. It switches. There's a cat pawing the toilet yeah. paper. <laughs> He's laughing, right? So this is this is exactly where we are. And and the guy in the ship looks like this. Right there he is. The, the, the guy in the commercial looks like this. And he yeah. slaps his head, and eventually, you know, everybody starts waking up. Is that predictive programming? You tell me. But what amazes me is how the church is utterly asleep, for the most part, at the wheel. Here we have a Super Bowl ad. Here we have, you know, David Grush talking about the veracity of the UFO phenomena, that it's not demonic delusion. We've got retrieved non-human biologics bodies in our possession yeah. i mean that that's like and this is my wheelhouse and then a couple of weeks after this a week or two after grush comes on anna paulina luna is in the halls of congress and she's being interviewed and she states we need to pay really close attention to what the whistleblower david grush is stating because he's stating on the record that these are not extraterrestrial they are interdimensional which is our wheelhouse my wheelhouse, your wheelhouse. These are the fallen ones. Now, uh, you know, pa Paulina Luna doesn't state that these are fallen angels, but who knows what's being whispered in the halls of Congress behind closed doors. But we are looking in my, and I've been banging this drum for over 30 years, that this is the coming great deception. This will change everything. It comes on the heels of a nuclear war, in my opinion. And yeah. it's... I mean, here we are, and this is, so it's burgeoning. I mean, to think that our Congress is discussing this, you know, head on. And, and Grush, you know, there was a bunch of hit pieces on Grush. Oh, he's this, he's that, you know. Why don't we, why do these guys do that? What are they so afraid of? So Grush was on Tucker Carlson for an hour, and, you know, Tucker got to the, to the meat of the whole thing, and, Grush is a very credible witness, in my opinion, extremely credible, very smart guy, very articulate, real straight shooter. In my opinion, as a student of body language for decades, this guy's telling the truth to the nines, to the nines. 
So mm. we are on the cusp of something. And that's just one, you know, this, this weekend I'll be at Prophecy Watchers Conference and I'll be speaking on, on this book, which came out in 2015. It's called Days of Chaos. It's, it's almost, I've had people write me and go, my gosh, oh, I just got your book. It's, it's so prophetic. I can't believe it. I'm not a prophet. I refuse to take any label. I'm just a servant of a living God, okay? Yeah. I, I hate that. You know, prophet this and prophet that and apostle this. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, why don't you guys it's, just sit down? And, it's and, it's and, a little and, pompous, you know, in my opinion, for people yeah, to use those really terms. really pompous, you know? <laughs> no, thank you. How about just servant of a living God, sinner saved by grace. Without him, I'm Amen. dust, okay? I cast my crown. So this book was published in 2015. And let me just read you some of what's there. Earthquakes in diverse places. Check. Wars and rumors of wars? Hello. Troublesome times? One world government? Fukushima disaster? False Christ and other prophets? Financial collapse? Lawlessness? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Signs in the heavens and earth? Volcanic activity? I mean, it, I mean, and all I did was take Matthew 24. That's really all I did. Right. You know, is take what, what the Bible talks about, what the end times will look like. That's all I did. And I just began to accumulate all this information. I'll be speaking on the Days of Chaos at Prophecy Watchers uh, this coming Friday. And then Saturday, we'll, we'll do a deep dive on the Roswell series. But this is coming down. Everything is firing um, on all eight cylinders, in my opinion. It's still, it's like at, at a halftime at a football game. I, I'm not a big football guy. I, I never watch anything, not even the Super Bowl usually. But mm -hmm. I, I'll watch the halftime at Super Bowl to just keep keep tabs on where the culture is. Yeah. So Super Bowl, or, or you know, <laughs> if, if we're going into the Super Bowl and now it's halftime and we're watching, you know, who knows what, perform what kind of a cult ceremony in front of millions of Americans. That's but I exactly digress. right. Yeah. So let's say it's 14-14 <laughs> at halftime. The teams are pretty evenly matched. You can't call it. I mean, you can if you want to. But you, it's, it's just like you know, flip of a coin. You can't possibly know who's going to win this thing. Anything can happen. That's yeah. where we are. Everything is firing. All the prophetic signs are there. Wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilence, lawlessness, troublesome times. We're here. We are absolutely here on steroids. The question is, will it continue or will it, you know, abate? Will it yeah. settle down? And we don't know that. That's why I watch Israel like a hawk. Yeah. You know, that's fascinating. You you bring up several things uh, because, first of all, Matthew 24, um, and, and it's my opinion that I, I believe we've been in the beginning of sorrows since Christ ascended up, but it, we're coming to the end of the beginning of sorrows. So yeah. to me, I would say the proliferation is sort of an indicator that we're approaching the last days. Uh, that's that's kind of where I, you know, if, if I were to take from what you just shared and and summarize that, I feel like it's happening for all those reasons because we're, we're in the last days. But you mentioned David Grush uh, and you mentioned how he's getting attacks and, and so did Bob Lazar, um, uh, though they to me, they seem to be sincere whistleblowers, in my opinion, as well. But do you believe there's any reason to suspect there's a deep state psyops going on with maybe not them but others uh, to try to distract away from this? Yeah, I mean, a, a, a perfect example of this is Grush talks about um, retrieved non-biologics, non-human. I'm sorry, retrieved biologics which are non-human. Sorry about <laughs> that. Retrieved biologics which are non-human. Grush makes that statement in the halls of Congress. You can't find it. I mean, you can find it. But the media didn't pick up on that. The greatest story of the 21st century, the media mm. completely asleep. But then, like a week later, there's Jaime Masson, and I love Jaime. I, keep, I was talking to one of his guys today and said, look, you need to give my guy the x-rays. This guy's a, a, a world-class radiologist. He can take a look at these things, and he's already looked at the third generation, and he's got problems. You know, he's saying that there's problems here. Well, those Peruvian mummies, that went flipping viral. It was everywhere. The Peruvian mummies and Jaime Masson, you know, uncovers them in the, in the Mexican Congress and shows the Peruvian mummies. I took one look at them and I just said, this is, in my opinion, this isn't real. It's, it's, it's nonsense. And so this, when the x-rays were revealed, this man whom I've never met before, he's a born again believer over in the UK, 
He contacted me. He can't come on the record because of what he does. He just said unequivocally, LA, I find all sorts of problems with these x-rays. This looks, in my opinion, this looks like a construct. So it's like that, the point being is that got legs in the media in ways, everybody knew about it. Everybody knew about it. Does everybody know about Grush in Congress? Nope. In fact, Grush has been disparaged since that initial report. And that's mm -hmm. why Tucker had him on his show. So, you know, we are, see, what, what, what the church doesn't get, what most people don't get, there's a supernatural world that surrounds yes. us. And it's manifesting in ways that are unprecedented, in my opinion. We are ramping up. There's no doubt in my mind, like you just said, these are the final days. We are ramping up to the one world government, the one world religious system, the coming great deception, the strong delusion. We are here. And Amen. we are ramping up to it. Now, yeah. as I said earlier, it all could just dissipate and, and fade away. It could do that. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like it's going to. Hi, if you're enjoying this podcast, please consider being a full-time subscriber. We are going to use these funds to expand the message and get the word out about what's in the Bible that the world doesn't want you to know about. That's right, John. We appreciate you listening, but we'd love it if you'd subscribe. That way we can reach more people with the time we have left. So enjoy the rest of the podcast, but think about subscribing if the Lord puts it on your heart. To subscribe, just go to BibleMysteries.Supercast.com. Thanks. From yeah, I, I agree. I, I think we're seeing a ramping up exactly as you described. And, you know, the, the terminology that Grush used where, where we, all, we had non-human biologics, and I think in another discussion, not in Congress, uh, not in the hearing, but he used the term interdimensional beings. Yes, he did. May, maybe it was him, if I'm recalling right. <clears throat> With your years of study on this, do you believe there are other dimensions or are these simply beings in the spiritual realm that we can't see like Elisha's servant in 2 Kings 6? You know, or is there a difference? Is there any distinction between those two? Well, that's that's a $64,000 question and, and and we don't know the answer. Nobody knows the answer to that really. It's conjecture and speculation, but based mm -hmm. on the biblical narrative when when Elisha's servant goes out you know Gehazi open his eyes Lord he sees the chariots of fire right you know there they are the chariots yep. of fire about the Syrian <laughs> army and you got to remember what are the chariots of fire Gehazi has nothing in his vernacular nothing in his lexicon nothing in his verbiage to describe what he's seeing today we would call it a UFO but UFO was only assigned or flying saucer in the 40s early 50s that was it. You go back in the Fatima, people go in 1917, people see this, this disc-like object. I looked up and saw above me a disc-like object. Well, what does that sound like? What's a disc-like object? It's certainly not the sun, right? And this thing came out of a cloud. So, you know, Elijah's, Gehazi goes out. I looked and there above the Syrian army were chariots of fire. So he's describing with his verbiage, with what he knows in his grid system, with the only words he has. A chariot is a vehicle, the vehicle of that time period. That was it. There are no <laughs> buses, trolleys, or cars. They're just chariots, okay? So yeah. he goes, a chariot, a vehicle of fire, because they glow, they're flaming, and that's all he knows. You know, he, it's okay, then it's it's a chariot of fire. It's right there in Second Kings. Um, and this is what's amazing about the Bible. You know, it's just, it's, it's giving a, a, a prelude of to where it's going. Yeah. And this is where we are. You know, if, if, you were if you and I were back there with Gehazi right now, if we could go back in time and stand with him, and Gehazi goes, look, chariots of fire, we would go, oh my gosh, UFOs. That's what we would say. In my I, I agree. I agree. I, I'd even go as far as to say that what Ezekiel describes in chapter 1 um, when he talks about the wheels on their side, that's what you a, a UFO would look like if you took a wheel. Let's let's say a chariot wheel, since that's the only frame frame of reference from that century. And you instead of having it upright as it would roll on the ground, you would turn it on its side. It would be a saucer. Exa there you go. Perfect example right there. Yeah, so there it is. There's the wheel. <laughs> mm -hmm. and now. Do Oh, Scott, I was going to add real. I was going to add real quick one other thing because you guys are referencing 
uh, biblical text here, but and, and LA is going to be probably an expert on this. But look at the Aztecs, right? And and what the they had carved in stone on their um, on their pyramids, right? They had guys that looked like they were literally sitting in a little some kind of a little motorcycle vehicle or some kind of a spaceship, some right? craft, a yeah, chariot of fire. Yeah. Yeah, also, and they it, look like they're carrying like, some purse-like thing, right? But I guess it's, I'm just trying to give a reference to something that's not biblical. You guys are referencing biblical stuff, but this is stuff that's not in the Bible that we're seeing etched in stone. And, and it is. I mean, you, you referenced the Aztecs, and I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, they are there in some sort of a capsule-like vehicle thing with levers and pedals and all this other stuff. I mean, what the heck is that? And why is it mm -hmm. there? Archaeologists just dismiss all this. Well, it's ceremonial. We don't know. I mean, they just like, you know, why, why can't we just sit down and have a conversation? You don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But I can look at that and I can say, something else is going on here, guys. Something, something very deep, very disturbing. And because modern-day archaeologists, most of them, hold to a Darwinian paradigm, there is no rule, room, there is no room for the supernatural. There just yeah. isn't. They're always going to defer back to what what we know. It's the same thing when you go, well, why are there pyramids in, in Egypt and all around the world over a certain period of time, and then it all disappears? How does that happen? You know, yeah. and, and when you look at Zawi Hawass in Egypt, and, you know, Zawi's a real smart guy on some level. I mean, I get it. Beat him, beat him, beat him. So he's out there doing, <laughs> doing, a, he's doing the same thing we're doing. You know, and, and Ralph Glidden, Ralph Glidden, who discovered the nine foot skeleton out in Catalina, he's called a grave robber by our archaeologists here. But somehow Zawi Hawass gets a pass for doing exactly that. They find a well. The well is all plugged up with limestone. They dig all that out. Sure enough, it's a burial. They find unbelievable objects and the mummies. Isn't that the same exact thing? But somehow everybody applauds Zawi. You know, it's like, yeah, put it in the museum, Zawi. And uh, oh, sorry, and and there and there we go. I mean, what are we looking at here? You know, what what is the truth for crying out loud? What are these people so afraid of? Someone asked me that recently on, on another podcast show I was on a couple of days ago, and and he goes, "La, what are these people so afraid of?" And I just said, "They're afraid of the biblical prophetic narrative, because yes. if it's true, they have to rethink everything. If the God of the Bible is true." You gotta start rethinking everything. If Jesus is the Son of God, you gotta rethink everything. He's not Sananda, this ascended master. He's not that at all. He's literally the Son of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He Man. is God. He was with the God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him, nothing that was not made that was made. I mean that that's it. He's you know, we either believe that that Jesus spoke everything into existence, or we can believe the fallacy that somehow the Darwinian paradigm over, they always go, they just keep adding zeros. Well, it's millions, no, 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 it's billions of years, and somehow we got the double helix of life, the deoxyribonucleic acid, the DNA molecular structure. I mean, which is just mind-boggling, mind-boggling how, that, how oh. that works. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this the whole Big Bang nonsense and w carbon entities were just formed because hydrogen exploded. You know, <laughs> that's that's where we came from, right? I mean, it's just, but there's this anti-biblical bias. Yeah. People, and, and I get it, you know, the church in some ways, okay, I'm going to start bagging on some stuff. So there's there's a uh, a wing of Christianity that declares that in order for Jesus to come back, we have to, you know, present the kingdom to him. Well, I don't see that anywhere in the, in the biblical narrative at all. Nor what do I. I. No. What I see is in Second Timothy, you know, in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will yeah. be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, and on and on it goes. So I don't, I don't see we're taking the seven mountains of anything. I see exactly what the Bible tells us. Everything is getting worser and worser and worser. And I use that word deliberately to get a laugh from the audience. <laughs> but things have grown much worse than, let's say, 25 years ago before 9-11. I mean, we're in, a, we're in a wholly different time frame. And that's exactly what we were told in the biblical prophetic narrative, if you just read it. So, you know, these guys that are running around... They're giving people false hope. 
You know, they are. They're giving people false hope and yeah. they're leading many people <coughs> astray. But we have we have to present the kingdom of Jesus. Show me where it says that. It doesn't say that anywhere. So yeah, you know, I, I agree. There, there are problems here. There are there are problems. Well, I think um, in fact, um, I just did a message about cognitive dissonance, and and it's it's affecting the church too. You know, uh, so I don't I don't mind uh, not pulling punches when it comes to the body of Christ because they need to be wakened, which is exactly what Paul wrote in Romans uh, 13 or, uh, when he said it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Uh, it's either 13 or 10. I may have the I think it's 13. <clears throat> L.A., do you see a connection between this UFO activity we've been discussing and, and appearances in hot areas like Ukraine or Israel or wherever there's wars. Do you, cause we know they seem to be, uh, uh, flexing their muscles about being able to disarm nuclear weapons or rearm them, rearm them. Do you think there's a tie in with wars or partic particularly wars in the middle East? I'll tell you something that the Lord led me in because, you know, I, everything, a lot of what I say and, and, and some of the examples I feel it's like spirit-led. I mean, I really do. I'm just not that smart. So the Lord connected some dots for me. When when Jesus um, commands the legion of demons to leave a demoniac, um, they say, what have you got to do with us, O son of the most high God? Have you come to torment us before our time? Yeah. They know. They know that this doesn't look like when they're rounded up and, and put in the abyss. No, this is this is not the time. How do they know that? How do they know that this is not their time? They say it openly to them. Have you come to torment us before the time? This is not the time. When Satan is cast to earth, he you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that Satan, the dragon, the, your adversary, is cast to earth, and he knows his time is short. How does he know that? How does yeah. he know his time is, you know, when the when the great eviction notice happens? In my opinion, we had this influx of UFOs right after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 1945. So two years later, we start, you know, Kenneth Arnold, people were seeing stuff. The Roswell event happens. They know, in my opinion, that they are waiting for a nuclear event that allows them to come, that allows them to manifest. Hmm, interesting. What, and this is why they are obsessed with turning the missiles on or turning the missiles off at Maelstrom. We broke the story in our Watcher series. My, my late business partner, uh, Richard Shaw, and I created, we did t 11 films together. And number 10, we interviewed Robert Salas. Well, Ro Salas has a book now. He's running around. Well, we broke the story, you know, in like, I don't know, 20... 15, something like that. Almost 10 years ago, we broke that story of Robert Salas. He was the base commander at the Maelstrom base up in um, Montana. He's hmm. the base commander. And a UFO. And these, and these are bases that store nuclear missiles, correct? Just wait. The, base, the UFO hovered over the gate. Everybody was freaked out. There were 10 intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear missiles, in silos, buried in, in that in that complex they switched off all 10 of them they all wow. went offline and then later wow. on they turned them back on again needless to say um salas says on the on the uh in the interview they were um shut, shuttled by helicopter to one of the command centers and he knew this guy that he debriefed them. This guy was as white as a sheet when they walked in. And this is a former B-17 pilot. This guy had been around. And mm. this guy was a sheet, and he sat them down, made them sign non-disclosure agreements with penalties, finan financial penalties, jail time, things like this, and said you were never to speak about this again, ever again. Yeah. So decades later, Salas, you know, comes on our Watchers series, again, with the late uh, Richard Shaw and I did, 11 of these things, and it's on my streaming.lamarzilli.net, streaming.lamarzilli.net. You can go watch that and stream it right after the interview and watch it for yourselves. Um, it's an unbelievable interview, and Salas spills the beans to us. We broke the story in our yeah. Watcher series. Now it's everywhere. The point being is 
that Salus is telling us that these entities are obsessed with our nukes. Why? It goes back to my original premise. Jesus casting out the demons, whatever you uh, have to do with us, us most high, most, son of the most high God, have you come to torment us before our time? And then Satan yeah. cast to earth and he knows his time is short. I think that that's the trigger. When a nuclear event goes off, um, and this has to do with the Fatima apparitions, when the so-called miracle of the sun came, uh, it had been raining all night and in the early morning. Finally, it stopped raining. The sun came out. But then a cloud moved in front of the sun, okay? And then from the cloud, out of the cloud, came a flying disc. That's what happened, according to many, many witnesses. And this disc, it was a disc-shaped object. That's what it was. Right. Disc what is this? I saw, looked up and saw a dull metal disc. What does that sound like? In 1917, there's nothing oh, vernacular yeah. that would say UFO or, or flying saucer. I was going to ask, are you making a connection then between the detonation of a nuclear device that somehow causes an event that allows them to appear, if not short-term, but maybe even long-term? Is that why you tied yeah, Hiroshima absolutely. and Nagasaki together yeah, in, I think in 1945? Well, that was the trigger, but they were that they knew something was up, but it wasn't their time. I guess that's conjecture oh. on my part. I don't have all the answers. Yeah. Nobody does, but that's well, what they're waiting. The reason for. I that is because when we were developed, when the United States was developing the nuclear weapon that they dropped on Nagasaki, that was in 1945, I believe. But they had been detonating nuclear weapons in the desert. I don't know what desert that was. It could have been New Mexico, for all I know. But they were detonated. Yeah. And so then if you start thinking about it, two years later, or probably three years later, because they had been developing the weapon that they dropped in 1945, in 1947 is when they they got the, the crashed spaceship in Roswell, right? <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, I find that kind of interesting how... It, it, I don't know what's going on in that whole time period, and I think the thing that no one ever asked about, and maybe this has nothing to do with, with the nuclear weapon stuff, is that Israel on the world stage became a nation again in 1948. So we have all this crazy stuff happening from World War II to developing nuclear weapons to dro dropping an atom bomb on Hiroshima to uh, Israel becoming a nation in 1948. And then yeah, after yeah. that, you, we start having all this activity in the United States. This is the end times. When, and, you know, Hal Lindsey talked about this. Israel is the time clock, the prophetic time clock. He, they've been regathered uh -huh. for the four corners of the earth. They're reestablishing their ancient homeland. This starts that clock ticking like crazy. So you're right. Roswell, and most people don't know this, Roswell was the home of the 509th bombing group. And the 509th bombing group is the world's only... Um, nuclear-equipped uh, bombing group. The intelligence office of the 509th Bombardment Group at Roswell Army Airfield announced at noon today that the field has come into possession of a flying saucer. That's from, that's from July 8th, right there. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep, yep, that's it. Why, why there? Because it's, it's the nuclear, they're, they're obsessed with it. There, there's no doubt about it. That's that's their go. So this is something that that Mondo Gonzalez and Jeff Van Hatten came up with. And then Mondo told me, and then I added something to it. And Billy Crone's been sort of talking about it also. So when Elijah goes up, Elisha sees him go up. It's not secret. Elijah yeah. watches him, right? So there's no there's no secret there. He just doesn't disappear. He goes up. When Jesus ascends into heaven, how many people are really there? We know that the apostles are there. I would posit that Mary, Mary Magdalene, you know, a whole host of people are there. They're not letting this guy out of their sight for a minute. They know the jig is up. They, they know. That's why they're there. And he, and he leaves. They watch him ascend into the cloud. They watch him ascend into the cloud. They watch it. 
Mm -hmm. When the two witnesses are resurrected in Jerusalem during the tribulation, they're resurrected, and then the world watches them do what? Ascend into the clouds. Yep. What if? What if? What if? Here's the rapture. Here's the rapture of the church. So we go up. We go up. And we go into the cloud, right? And we disappear, right? And right after that, that's what comes down. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. To gain access to bonus ad-free content, consider supporting us and becoming a premium podcast subscriber at BibleMysteriesPodcast.com.